Okay, so the paper's dried, except for the one where I poured lots of chemistry on it, and that's going to be just more of a expose it to the sun without doing anything else to it anyways. And I'll show you the final result for that, but the, the same basic idea is going to apply. If you go with an abstract design like that, where you're just putting the chemistry on and you're not using a negative or something that you can use as a photogram, then you don't need to worry about having um, a frame or a piece of glass or something to keep your thing together. Now, the more, let me, just, let me start that over. Now, the tighter that you have your negative or your object against the um, treated piece of paper, then um, the sharper your image is gonna be. Now, sharp maybe is very important for what you're doing, maybe not, it, it, it's really up to you. Now, um, as you can see, I've got back here uh, a cheap bucket. Uh, maybe you can't see that. Got my negative, got a, a little piece of a, of a fern here. Cheap bucket, you don't need to have something like this. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, just any bucket, and at this point, you don't have to worry so much about chemistry ruining anything so long as you clean it very well. So anything that you have that can uh, be used to put a print in is gonna be fine. I've got in here all of my treated paper, and um, obviously when you're out in a very bright sunlight, in Arizona has wicked bright sunlight, um, you really need to protect it at this point. Our exposures are gonna, are gonna be anywhere from um, probably 15, 20 seconds to depending, uh, maybe a couple minutes where you are, uh, depending on how bright the sun is, if you have a little bit overcast. Here we have a, a perfectly um, cloudless day and um, I can show you a little around, I guess, suppose. Uh, doing this here from the backyard of our uh, rental house, which uh, we're not gonna be very much longer. Um, the next thing that we have here is a contact printing frame. Now this is made specifically for this kind of work. And um, sorry about the, the noise here in the background. Uh, I live pretty close to the Air Force Base. And we've had everything from C-130s to A-10s to F-16s to some other jet I've never seen before uh, flying by. It's a very busy day today. Anyways, negative. The reason that this is a special uh, frame for making contact prints is because it's, it's got the hinge down the middle. And the reason to, that you might want that is that it allows you to open half the, the frame up and check for exposure without ruining the um, orientation that you have with your uh, your negative on your paper. Obviously you don't need to have something like this. Anything that's going to allow you to have your negative touching your paper is going to be fine so long as it transmits UV light. Uh, the other thing I might mention here is I'm not sure if you can see it with the wide angle but I've got uh, my, my girls kind of running through here so you might see maybe you might see spring Certainly if you hear anything in the background, it sounds like rustling. Uh, that's my little terrier hunting lizards. Uh, don't worry, she, she never catches them. So uh, what we're gonna do here, open this up, and this has just got little, little snap ups. And again, obviously you don't really need to know this because you don't, I'm sure, have a contact printing frame, but if you decide you really like this process, then you might consider buying one. I don't really want to put this on the ground and get it all dirty, but be careful about it. Now, I'll, again, I need to be very, very careful about exposing the paper here just because it's so bright. Keeping it upside down will help. It's not going to be an absolute problem uh, picture here. So keep it upside down. I'm going to put my negative over it. And usually I'd wear a watch for this, uh, but basically hold it in front of the sun. 
and hopefully you can see on the video that already this yellow green chemistry is changing to a deep blue and of course the more you direct it towards the sun the faster it's going to go and the brighter the sun is um, I'm videotaping this about 10:30, 11 o'clock so pretty bright yeah, morning sun Again, usually I would be timing this, but well, I'm not wearing a watch right now. So this is the, the little bit bigger, a little bit thicker piece of watercolor paper. So it's going to hold up a little better to the, the washing. And that's going to come up pretty soon. Now if I wanted to test how the exposure is coming, I could unsnap half, half of these. open it up, kind of peel back a little bit and see how it looks. Um, we're coming along pretty good. It won't be much longer. Okay, so my video cut on me a little bit at the end there and um, I didn't realize it, so you missed the whole washing stage and the photogram. So what I'm doing here is uh, exposing a second negative and uh, it's almost done here and I will show you the washing stage. As you can see I didn't do a very good job signing, uh, making the edges of the negative frame parallel to the edges of the paper frame. Uh, you are welcome to explore that as, as part of the overall look of your, of your uh, sign effect print or your photogram. If you're going to make it crooked and it doesn't make sense, then I'd say don't do it. Uh, if you are going to just put it in there like this and not be very careful about it, uh, what I would do, um, well, what I will do, is I'll trim this up before I go to uh, frame it or, or um, display it in any sort of way. So uh, we're going to call this pretty close to good. Um, it could probably stand to go just a touch longer, but. Um, You'll get the idea and you'll, you'll see the final prints and see how they turned out. So for this, I just use a little piece of plastic to a bucket to, to wash it. And you can see once you start to add the water, there's a little bit of unused chemistry. It starts to come off kind of yellow. The more you wash it, the, the clearer the water can be. This is just a little dog washing wand. Uh, this is actually the first time I've tried it, and it works pretty good for this. But you know, anything that's running water is going to work just fine. Uh, the thing that's nice about this is it actually has a, a pretty good stream so you get a, a pretty even wash over the, the course of the whole print. So once you're about halfway done, it's coming out pretty clear, turn it upside down, wash off any chemistry that might be on the back of it. The key is to make sure these are very, very well washed. Any leftover chemistry is going to continue to develop. Even if you put it behind UV protective glass, it's still going to get a little bit of exposure. So I think that turned out pretty good. The next step is just to let it dry. 
And once it's completely dry, then you can scan it or photograph it. It's gonna dry just a little bit darker than, than what it looks like. Uh, but you can at least get an idea of, of how it might uh, look in the final uh, at this point. So then the last thing I want to show you is how to make a photogram. Now, um, I don't really know where my video left out or where I was talking about it because uh, I wasn't keeping notes, but basically um, the, the, the paper where I was pouring the, the water on, I'm just using the chemistry itself as a design. And um, you can make any sort of shape you want. And you, can, you can paint it on there, you can pour it on there. You can make the shapes and use it basically as paint and uh, make your design that way and just expose it directly to the sun. Uh, the photogram uh, is one where you, you use direct contact with an object onto the, the, the sen light sensitive paper. And uh, when you do that, you, you want to make sure that you have a graphic sort of design about it to, to give your, your, your design some image, some, uh, some, some visual interest. Now, um, I'm going to use a, a kind of wilted looking uh, piece of a fern. And um, I'm going to use on a piece of paper where I was really kind of sloppy with the, the painting on of the chemistry. And hopefully what it will find is that the, the, the design of the way I, I applied the chemistry along with the fern will combine in order to, to make an interesting sort of graphic image. If you are going to go with a photogram, I, I definitely want you to think about how these things are going to look together when you, um, first of all, when you're, when you're first thinking about what you might use for your, your photogram, but also um, when you actually start to apply chemistry to your paper, um, think about, you know, maybe if you have a little bit heavier application here, maybe if you've got a little bit of drips here and there, uh, think about how those things might all work together for the final image. So, um, I've taken out my negative, and I guess the other thing I wanted to mention about the negatives is we use laser printer transparencies, and if you are serious about making beautiful cyanotype prints, um, understand this isn't really um, the, the best media. Um, I'm sure that you'll see with your own, you, you get little lines and stuff that are introduced from the, the laser printer. Uh, there, there actually is um, really fine quality inkjet um, photo media that you would use for this. And um, for my own work, I actually have some Epson transparency media that I, I use to, to make um, my sanotypes. This is a, a transparency just in the same way that I wanted you to see what, what um, you, I wanted to show you the way that, that you're going to be doing it. But just know that there's other options available. Here you go, you can see I've got kind of a sloppy design on there. There's not really a good way to show you that without an extra set of hands. I'm just going to expose this. You can see the, the various, maybe, you know, Hopefully you'll see when you do it yourself that having something with, with, with variations in the opacity will um, really change the way that, that your design looks. You can see the the media was applied somewhat uh, evenly. You get the little brush strokes at the end, uh, but it's, but it's actually exposing pretty quick. Glad to see I'm still recording. So I think this is all I need for my photogram. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, give it the wash.
key is really to make sure that you, you have all of your chemistry washed off so you don't over expose after that. So there you have it. For this one, I'd, I would probably present it this way with a, a vertical frame. And you can see how the, the brush strokes kind of, uh, you know, being that the same, they're the same orientation as the, the fern leaves, they, they kind of add to the overall composition. I really look forward to seeing your results soon. And uh, let this dry. I'll scan this one and the other ones I make so that you can see all of the, all of the uh, different looks that, that you can get with just one transparency and one photogram. Of course, for your assignment, I want you to do four different images uh, for your final submission.